Here is the IOG sustainability report. Apparently people weren't very happy that Cardano, and I know I'm using IOG and Cardano interchangeably here, but hey, let's face it. There are three founding entities of Cardano and IOHK, IOG, they do a lot for Cardano, not just on the development side, but also on the pushing the ecosystem forward side. Yes, the Cardano Foundation is being built out. They're going to bulk up. They got a bigger budget. They're hiring more people. That's going to happen. But IOHK has been a huge part of the PR push for Cardano all along. And they were always going to talk about this, guys. They were always going to talk about this, thinking that IOG and Cardano weren't going to talk about how much more energy and if energy efficient they were than proof of work blockchains is like thinking that Elon Musk wasn't going to talk about how much more efficient Tesla's are than internal combustion engine vehicles. This is a huge advantage for Cardano. I know, I know a huge cottage industry has sprung up around mitigating the argument that Bitcoin is not very energy efficient. And people have done some great lawyering. I mean, that's what it is. It's lawyering. People, it's like you took a bunch of lawyers and you said, hey, come up with some arguments as to why the energy consumption of Bitcoin doesn't matter. And people did a great job because there are very, very smart people in Bitcoin. They're not dumb. They're super smart. Same with Ethereum all the proof of work, big proof of work blockchains, they've got legions of fans, legions of fans who would die for Bitcoin, die for Ethereum, and they're smart and they've come up with great arguments. The stranded energy thing is genius. Uh, the incentivizing development of sustainable green energy argument, that's genius, but none of it changes the fact that those blockchains are much less energy efficient. They just are. And this document does a really good job of explaining just how much better Cardano is doing at energy efficiency than those other blockchains. And it, it's a little naive to think that Cardano wouldn't push this argument. Everybody talks their book and a lot of people hold both Cardano and Bitcoin. And a lot of people hold Cardano and Ethereum. And a lot of people hold all three. So people, people, it's against their best interest for Cardano to be talking about one of the most sensitive topics about Bitcoin, this taboo topic. It's always been taboo. I've, I've held, I've held Bitcoin. I think I bought my first Bitcoin. I got into Bitcoin in that 2012, 2013 period. I think I bought Bitcoin for the first time in 2014. I still have Bitcoin. I've had Bitcoin this entire time. Uh, you know, I think intermittently, uh, maybe back in 2014, 2015, you know, there might've been, you know, days where I was trading or something and I didn't have Bitcoin, but I pretty much had Bitcoin going all the way back to those days. And, uh, it's bad for me too. It's bad for me too that Bitcoin is so much less efficient than technology that's much newer like Cardano. But what do you expect? Cardano is leaps and bounds more advanced than Bitcoin in terms of energy efficiency. And they point out some interesting stuff in this paper. For those of you who are, we're all going to talk our book, right? We're all going to talk our book. Everybody who holds both Bitcoin and Ethereum is not going to like Cardano saying bad things about the energy efficiency of those other two blockchains. But what those people should do is just attack the facts, right? I mean, tone and delivery are important too, but I mean, come on, you guys... You guys are expecting Elon Musk not to be loud when he talks about how much more efficient Teslas are than like Chevys. <laughs> he's going to talk about it no matter what, and he's going to be really loud. There's no way around it. It's going to happen. So what I would suggest is that people focus on the facts if they don't like Cardano talking about this. And there's some very interesting facts in this paper. For instance, these ones they've highlighted in green, I think wisely. And I can't vouch for the truth of anything in this paper. I haven't done this research. I don't know. I'm assuming I, IOG did a great job researching all this. But I mean, it seems like some of the facts they, they're putting, pushing out there, they cut against the narrative that's been woven by especially the Bitcoin community. I don't know who's right, but I think it's very interesting that I, you know, 
again, I, I don't have, I don't have any of the data in front of me to know who's right, but I think there's some very interesting statements in here like this one, 98% of the computers involved involved in mining and proof of work. And we've talked about how Bitcoin proof of work mining works on this channel. 98% of the computers involved fail to ever produce transactions. That's some inefficiency guys. And you can make arguments about how the energy spent, you know, is securing the network and that's the value in the expenditure of energy. But man, uh, Cardano seems pretty secure to me and they point out right here, it's 10,000 times more efficient. Cardano is estimated to use 0.01% of the energy of Bitcoin, 10,000 times more efficient. And you know what? There is a gigantic bug bounty in Cardano. If you can crack the Cardano chain, there's a lot of money, lots of billions of dollars in the Cardano chain. What are we, what are we at right now? 60 something billion. I don't even know what the exact number is right now, but there's a lot of money in there to be stolen. And yes, there'd be slippage. If you cracked the chain, there would be slippage. People would start bailing, you know, so maybe you couldn't really extract that much money, but there'd be a lot of money to be made. If Cardano wasn't secure, it seems like Cardano is pretty secure. Next up we have, uh, <clears throat> Experts point out that the uh, the records, so this is the um, uh, the emissions data from India and China, are plus or minus a hundred percent. You know, I mean, I also even the days before Cardano, people would confront me with the energy expenditure of Bitcoin, and I would say, "Hey, all those all those uh, <clears throat> all those rigs deployed in China, they're next to." dams that's hydropower that's clean energy but here iog is pointing out hey the uh the records as far as emissions in china might be a hundred percent off i don't think even in those days i knew it at that time even even at that time i knew while the mining operations are all telling us that they are you know they are located you know near dams and it's all hydropower they're using at the time i was like yeah but how many coal burning plants are they also next to that they're not talking about so I think um, the old data that we used to rely on to refute these arguments, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that data was actually correct. I mean, I think there's reason to question whether or not that data was correct coming out of China. But we all know China famously booted all the Bitcoin mining operations, all the crypto mining operations, and so now the crypto mining is happening in places like Kazakhstan, cited here, the U.S., Russia. So they repeat that figure: 98% of the mining rigs will never you know, solve the puzzle first. So they get to mine the next block. We've, we've talked about exactly how that works on the channel, but 98% will never find the nonce that produces a SHA-256 hash that's below the target number first and get to mine the next block. This is a problem when you consider what they're pointing out here. One mining center in Kazakhstan alone is running 50,000 rigs. 50,000 rigs running and 98% will never get the number first. Okay, so there were a lot of people spouting numbers today. The first thing that a lot of people go to when they're trying to defend the energy efficiency of Bitcoin is they start spouting these figures and I see all kinds of numbers. Some people are some people say that 75% of the power used to fuel Bitcoin is renewable. 60% of the power used to fuel Bitcoin is renewable. 56% and rising. I see all kinds of numbers. Right here, IOHK is saying 61% of the power used to fuel Bitcoin comes from fossil fuels. So those people who are saying that uh 56%, 60%, 70% is coming from renewable energy. There's some conflict here. This can't simultaneously be true. We can't have 61% coming from fossil fuels and 50% coming from <laughs> renewable energy. That's too many percent. Somebody's wrong here. And I, you know, if I had to, if I had to guess, I would bet, see, uh, IOHK is citing Forbes here. If I had to bet, I would guess that IOHK is more correct than the random Twitter poster who's trying to say that 75% is renewable energy. It looks like 61% is fossil fuels. Here's another very interesting stat. 
Others estimate that the total Bitcoin carbon footprint cancels out the entire greenhouse gas emission reduction of electric vehicles. So all the Teslas, all the Chevy Bolts and Volts, I know I'm, I'm citing vehicles and aren't pure electric vehicles even here, all the electric vehicles in China, all of the, uh, all of the, the Porsche electric vehicles, all of them together, they're saying that the carbon footprint of Bitcoin cancels all that out. That's not good because as we, as we try to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and plug your ears, if you don't believe the greenhouse gas emissions are bad, I know some of you think that's the case, just plug your ears. We don't have to fight about it. If we're trying to reduce greenhouse gas, gas emissions, the electric vehicle thing is one of our big hopes. That's one of the things that people are the most excited for. If Bitcoin alone is canceling all that out, that's not, that's not good. That's not good. So they cite some more figures here. And these are the kinds we're used to seeing. Bitcoin consumes around 110 terawatt hours of energy per year, more than Argentina, the same as Malaysia or Sweden. Ethereum uses as much as Chile. And, uh, and to produce a ton of CO2 for every non-fungible token. This is the one that I think gets people really upset because we all know people love NFTs and people love Ethereum NFTs, and they do not like to hear that maybe producing an NFT on Ethereum produces a ton of CO2. People don't like to hear that. I understand why people got so upset about this report, but if it's true, we have to look at the facts, not what we want to be true. We have to look at what's actually true, not what we wish is true, not what we aspirationally hope is going to be true in five or 10 years. Facts are facts and present facts are present facts. Maybe things will change in the future, you know? Maybe there is this stranded energy thing, you know? The argument certainly makes sense. Uh, you know, we've also got this, uh, this idea that proof of work blockchains incentivize production of sustainable green energy. Argument makes sense, but the present facts are not really good and Elon Musk is going to talk about it, right? Cardano is going to talk about this. This is a great thing about Cardano, a great advantage over its competitors. It's naive to think that Cardano wouldn't talk about this. It's a huge advantage. We should talk about this so that the world knows that there are cryptos out there that don't use the same amount of energy as Sweden that don't produce a carbon footprint that cancels out the entire gas emission reduction of EVs. Again, I don't know if any of this is true. I'm just citing what's in this report. So I'm not presenting this as fact, but if I had to guess, I would guess that IOHK probably does a pretty good job researching these things. People also tried to make some arguments today that were, it was kind of like they were saying, okay, that's great, fine. Maybe you are that much more energy efficient than both Bitcoin and Ethereum, but don't compare yourself to them. It's bad. Somehow it's bad to compare yourself to your competitors. And if you don't think that Bitcoin and Ethereum are competitors to Cardano, you're crazy. There are a ton of people who come into crypto and when they come to crypto, they look, a lot of people look at those top 10 blockchains and they ask themselves, which ecosystem should I participate in? And some people are going to participate in all of them. Some people are only going to participate in one of them. Some people are going to choose to participate in Bitcoin and not Cardano or Cardano and not Bitcoin. But that happens. We are direct competitors. I know you can argue that Bitcoin is a store of value and Cardano is a smart contract chain, but we are competing for the participation of consumers in our, in our systems. There is competition there and it's heavy competition. So I, Asking Cardano not to talk about this huge advantage. It's doing a much better job at these at this energy efficiency thing, regardless of you know the the uh, mitigating arguments this cottage industry of Bitcoin maximalists uh, has come up with to explain away the energy consumption of Bitcoin. Regardless of those arguments, it's indisputable that Cardano is doing a much better job than those other two blockchains at energy efficiency, and it's competing with them for participation. And these are networks. Network effect is important. Participation is impor important. They're all participating. They're all competing for participation. And a lot of the world cares about this energy efficiency thing. 
can you, I mean, this is like asking Cardano not to talk about this is like going, going back, you know, going back 10 years ago and asking Tesla to not talk about the numbers on their cars. Don't talk about the energy efficiency in your cars versus, you know, uh, GM and Ford and Toyota, Honda, Volkswagen. We don't want to hurt the car industry, <laughs> right? Hey, Tesla, we don't want you to hurt the car industry by talking about the emissions of cars. It would have been ridiculous to make that request. It's ridiculous to make that request now of Cardano. Some people are worried about hurt feelings and, you know, I don't know if they're worried about the car, the Bitcoin people hating us. I think it's largely they're just talking their book. They're investors in both Bitcoin. A lot of people are investors in, in Bitcoin or in th Ethereum as well as in Cardano. And a lot of people just, you know, they are afraid of being in competition. I think, I think they, you know, they, just want the whole, we all want the whole crypto space to go up. I mean, I think there are bad projects out there and I don't want those projects to go up, but we need to be honest about certain things. There are, there are different levels of energy efficiency in blockchains. And we just need to accept the fact that Cardano is much better than some of its primary competitors. Sure. There are blockchains out there that are probably even more energy efficient than Cardano because they probably because they sacrifice some of some leg of the blockchain trilemma, but we are much better at this than some of our competitors. And it's ridiculous to think that we wouldn't talk about this. I hope this didn't hurt anybody's feelings. I love you all, even if you totally disagree with me and I'll talk to you soon.